not that long after 9-11, I started thinking about how I could make a film that would explore it. United 93, Cleveland, now verify your altitude. Tom, I'm getting no response out of a United 93, no response at all. I mean, I remember being absolutely drawn to United 93 and the struggle on the plane. And so then it was a question of situating that struggle in its correct context, which was all these systems. And the thin tissue of rationality that, you know, by which we live our lives and how easy it is to tear it and what happens when we do and how swiftly the, the systems crash. All the people were all air traffic controllers who'd been there on the day. You know, we'd brought over to play that part. The idea was that you know, you'd sort of, you have a few actors in amongst professionals. And if you get that balance right, and if you're very, very lucky, the sort of actors stop acting and the non-actors start acting and you sort of get this beautiful sense of reality. Ben, yeah. New York Center called. They were tracking the primary target, but they've lost it. They said they lost America. Yeah, it looks like. Where did they lose it? At? Somewhere over the city. They over the city? Yeah. He's, he's down they, they over the city? They don't know if he's under the radar coverage All out right, there or get, not. Get in touch with the Metro Towers, see if they got a visual. Hey, okay, I'll call Traycon, see if they got a visual. And there was this incredible emotional electricity on the set. And, and you can see it in other moments. I remember there's a, there's a, a shot in that film. It's one of my favorite shots in the film, actually, where where you're inside that military command center. Did you see that? Did you see that, sir? One of the planes has gone off course and they're, they're trying to work out what's going on. Jesus Christ. And the second plane, I think, has just hit the tower. And you see this woman and one of the uh, office is, is pushing the room for information and you can see on her face shock and emotion. Shauna, what do you got? What do you got, Shauna? Boston said that, um, Boston just said they have another hijacked aircraft, United 175. And that's not acting, you know, it was, it, 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 she had relived events that she'd gone through. Listen, what is happening? Just, Can you we're going back to the airport. Everything's going to be fine. All the, right. well, the rule that I set up front was that we weren't going to shoot from outside the airplane. In other words, we weren't going to use it as a, as a set with floating walls, which you could have done. I mean, we could have cut Listen, the thing in half. They're on, the pilots are on the ground. That was the pilots. They're on the ground outside the cockpit. They're on the floor. I wanted the sensation that we were in the plane and we were as constricted in our camera movements as you would have been were you there. Pilots aren't flying the plane. She saw two bodies in front of the cockpit on the floor. You know, the way Barry Aykroyd and Clements shot it, they were inhabiting this world, so they were, they were responding to events as they were occurring, and it, it, it gave it that heightened sense of reality, you know. You can call a chef and we're going to Jesus. I think that scene that begins with the counter-attack, if you like, from the passengers. And it always felt to me watching that that there was something of what was going on in our world. That was the post 9-11 world, you know, a, a desperate sort of struggle for the control of modernity, you know.